In the first video, we discussed the scaling theory of localization in a general context. What of it is relevant for topological insulators and topological superconductors? On what side of the metal insulator transition you are depends on the starting point of the flow. The starting point is determined by microscopic details, such as the Fermi energy, the impurity concentration, and the type of impurities. In general, localization is favored near the edges of a band when velocities are small, whereas electronic states are most robust to disorder near the band center. The Fermi energy at which the metal insulator transition takes place is known as the mobility edge. You remember the metal insulator transition in three dimensions and the two dimensions for the symplectic class separated the point where the flow was towards the localized phase and a metallic phase. If there are multiple bands, the distance between mobility edges is known as the mobility gap. Schematically, you can see this as follows. If energy is on the vertical axis, then bands can be shown schematically like this. Then near the band center, if there are extended states, they are here. And localized states are closer to the band edges. The energy at which the transition takes place is known as the mobility edge. And the distance between mobility edges of adjacent bands is the mobility gap. So this mobility gap can be bigger than the spectral gap. In many of the considerations on topological insulators and superconductors, in the presence of disorder, the mobility gap takes over the role of the band gap. In particular, two disordered systems are topologically equivalent if their Hamiltonians can be deformed into each other without closing the mobility gap. One example is a spinless P-wave superconductor wire, for which you know that Majorana bound states can exist at the ends. They can continue to exist with disorder, although disorder leads to a finite density of states all the way down to zero energy. However, since these states are localized, they do not affect the topological phase. Of course, if there is a theory that works so well, like the single parameter scaling theory, any deviation from this theory is the more interesting. One famous deviation is the integer quantum Hall effect, where one needs one additional parameter, in addition to the conductance G, to describe the scaling. You will hear more about this from Professor Altland. But there are also deviations in which single parameter scaling is believed to continue to hold, at least qualitatively, although the scaling flow is different from the one I just presented. The edge of a two-dimensional topological insulator is a trivial example, for which the dimensionless conductance G is bounded from below by 1. The surface of a three-dimensional topological insulator is another example. Because of the symplectic symmetry, you already expect that weak disorder does not localize these surface states. The surprise is, however, that no disorder, no matter how strong, can localize the surface states. The beta function is positive for all G. Of course, this remains true only as long as the disorder does not close the mobility gap in the bulk of the insulator. The same is true for surface states of other topological insulators and superconductors. A topic of intense present interest is whether localization persists in the presence of single electron, sorry, in the presence of electron-electron interactions. There is consensus that strong enough interactions destroy localization because interactions allow electrons to get through the entire system by hopping between different localized states. However, at weak enough interactions or at low enough temperatures, this is no longer possible 
and there is a so-called many-body localized phase. This concept of many-body localization may also be relevant for topological phases. There are scenarios that this order, in the form of many-body localization, is essential to protect a topologically non-trivial phase against interaction effects that would destroy it in the absence of this order.